I'm Mike Breen, Public Awareness Officer for the American Mathematical Society, and I'm talking with Mattia Serra, who is a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University, and we're talking about work he's done uh, using math to help uh, rescue people at, at sea. Uh, so Mattia, can you uh, tell us what you discovered, what you've done? Yeah, so this is basically was a joint um, project with several, several other institutions, and there was a spin-off of what I was doing uh, during my um, PhD at ETH uh, Zurich. So what we did basically, we uncovered short-term attractors on the ocean surface. And these attractors basically, they can reveal uh, critical information is in hazard response scenarios, for instance, like search and rescue operation and oil spill. And then we also tested our theoretical predictions in several uh, ocean field experiments where together with the collaborators, we deployed the drifters and mannequins on the ocean surface and then we showed that they were indeed getting um, or they were indeed dr drifting towards this what we call traps or transient uh, attracting uh, profiles within a few hours and we also showed that basically these traps were typically hidden to classical um, and typically used flow diagnostics mm -hmm. And so it, you mentioned they were short term, which is an advantage, and that's the time scale you're interested in. And, and also they, they seem, to, because like, like you imagine when a, a boat goes down, uh, the people who are looking for where the boat was, or you know, looking for the people who went down, they don't know exactly where it went down, they don't know exactly what time it happened, and so there, there's the advantage of your method, is it's robust, right? Yeah, yeah. So there are two things. So you want to be quick because uh, the, the likelihood of finding people drops significantly after a few hours. So it's very important to allocate the search assets that are available to the Coast Guard immediately. So that's why they should be short term. Um, and yeah, so a very um, good feature of uh, these traps is that they don't really depend on the exact location and time where the objects are falling in water or people are falling in water, but it's more, the focus is more where they will go, uh, well, where they will get attracted to basically. Yeah, so this basically gives some robustness of, uh, in, with respect to uncertainties in initial position and time. And, and so this is really relies on differential equations? Yeah, so I think the, the, the math involved was mainly a dynamical system or in, to be more specific, calculus of variations. So we, we tried to ask the following questions. If you have a, a non-autonomous general planner dynamical system, you want to know what are the curves that in the phase space of this dynamical system are the most attracting one. Because when you know this curve, then they will basically shape the material transport over short times. And so we phrased that mathematical um, problem, and then using calcul calculus of variations, we were able to find the extremizers of this of these problems, which uh, then we call traps, or which is also you know stands for transient attracting profiles. And, and, and these are curves. Yeah, those are curves. They are one-dimensional uh, curves. And this, this is another important feature that is important in um, hazard response, which is that if you have already uh, one-dimensional curves, you don't have to span two-dimensional uh, areas, but you can allocate search assets, uh, search assets much uh, uh, more effectively. And, and you did mention that, that you've, you've tried it out. You did experiments and they worked. Yeah, maybe I can just show uh, quickly a movie sure. on this. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, what we did basically, once we had the transient attracting uh, profile, once we had the algorithm uh, working, we went down uh, to Martha's Vineyard in the east coast of the US, and then with experimental uh, tools, mainly provided by the um, Woods Hole, um, we wanted to basically deploy drifters and mannequins in the water and then GPS track these drifter mannequins showing uh, their real-time trajectories to see if they were indeed getting attracted to traps or not. And we did these field experiments three times. Maybe I'm just going to show you uh, one here. So what you can see here, this black, these white dots are basically the, the GPS uh, track position of uh, drifters that we deployed in this area. And there were about 70 at the beginning. So this may be thought as, you know, people falling in water at a certain location. And in the background, I'm just showing the velocity streamlines. And uh, this is all experimental data. So the velocity streamlines are using 
high frequency radar, so which is a sensed velocity field in these regions of the in this region of the ocean. And then I'm just gonna show the movies after a few hours where you can see the evolution of streamlines, the evolution of traps, and, uh, and the evolution of these um, drifters. Okay. So if I basically uh, play the movie, you see that after a few hours, I'm, I'm just gonna navigate you how to interpret this movie. So the scalar field is gonna be how much traps are attracting. The traps are basically the red curves that you can see here. Those are the transient attracting profile. And the, most, the more blue, the more attracting they are. So the idea is that whenever after two hours, basically, if you can see after two hours, that there is the emergence of a very strong trap that basically attracts and redistribute these 70 drifters in a very you know, well-defined orientation and, 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 and location. So this basically tells you that no matter where you start in, in a certain region, um, these traps were attracting um, um, drift that were basically um, navigating in that um, position of the ocean. And it's also important to notice that in the background, we are seeing the velocity streamlines. That is also a diagnostic used for uh, identifying where, um, you know, objects on the ocean surface are, are floating. And there is actually no signature of these traps on these velocity streamlines. So maybe you can just uh, pause it here. So these traps may be completely perpendicular to streamlines. And we also show that these informations are also not available in the um, horizontal divergence of the velocity field. And uh, yeah, this is perhaps not surprising because we designed this trap these traps by definition to be the most attracting curves um, on a general uh, dynamical system. So this is uh, um, just a, a, an example showing the effect of traps with, the, with real data. And so you then, let's say if something happened, uh, that, that, you know, like the simulation, would yeah. the, the searchers then would focus on these curves and then hope to, you know, maybe they might not be right there, but hope that the people or what they're searching for are close by. Yes, so basically our tentative, um, I mean, this is just a schematic, but the idea is that if you have a certain number of uh, search assets, basically, um, then you, you may want to compute the traps in a specific regions where the search is going to happen. And then you want to allocate optimally your you know, search assets so that with the, these regions that are one dimensional curves on these, on these ocean surfaces basically will be and, and then hopefully um, uh, that you know the missing objects will be identified. And, and then I think another important thing, I, I don't know if we said it yet or not, is that uh, you can uh, determine these from data that's readily or easily quickly available, right? Yeah, so these, the, 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 we can determine basically, these traps are very quick to compute uh, because they don't rely on the trajectory integrations. Yeah, um, they can be computed if you have um, remotely sensed velocity field, but also if you have modeled velocity field, which is basically what is mainly happening during search and rescue operations. Huh. And actually, um, we are uh, in contact and in, and in touch with the um, US Coast Guard. So we basically shared the algorithm that we provided. And now they're um, exploring the possibility of including these uh, traps in their um, operational uh, search and rescue uh, planning. Well, excellent. Congratulations. Uh, so uh, thanks for sharing your screen. Uh, and now, uh, so what are you working on now? Are you, are you working on more experiments? Or are you, are you looking into something else? Uh, no, I think now I'm working uh, on two different things. So um, recently I became interested in uh, problems in uh, mathematical biology and especially trying to understand uh, uh, and uncover the essential driving mechanisms behind uh, some biological processes, in, in particular embryonic development, using both uh, data-driven methods and um, mathematical modeling. So this is what I've been working in the last um, couple of years. And uh, at the same time, uh, with other collaborators, we are planning to include um, new features in the traps, which is basically accounting for other phenomena that are important for the drift of objects on the ocean surface, and then perhaps iterate this um, and um, improve and see if there is mm -hmm. it, it 
there is, there is possibility to improve with the available information, um, the predictions that are coming from traps. Okay. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, we are in contact with the Coast Guard. So this is basically a um, two-way process where they basically ask what's mainly needed. And then we try to iterate more um, the technique. And so, Matthias, is there anything you think we missed? Is there anything big you'd like to add? No, I think uh, that that was a fantastic opportunity for me to be part of this uh, project. Um, it, was, it was, again, as I said, a very big uh, multidisciplinary and multi-university project. And I really hope that the results that we got could be helpful for, you know, either saving lives or uh, limiting the impact of environmental disaster like for instance, how it's been. All right, uh, so that's Mattia Serra, who is a postdoctoral fellow, fellow at our Harvard University. Mattia, uh, congratulations on that work, you and your team, uh, and thanks for talking with us. Thank you. Thank you.